I want to test out Fluent Forms for my website and also client websites. So here I am at easywebdesigntutorials.com. I will add Fluent Forms to this website. I am using Ninja Forms today, mm -hmm. but I will switch that out with Fluent Forms. So I have then uh, found the form, I installed it, and now uh, I will activate it. So we see it just about Ninja Forms here. I will go to the Forms screen. And here we see two demo forms that are uh, included. These are active. I can deactivate this. I can activate both of them like so. Uh, I can either choose to edit the form demo here or create a new form. I will add a new form. So here I can add a blank form. I can choose from a template. And here it says here, turn your contest service into conversations. So I will just add a new blank form. If I wanted to, I could also import a form from another form plugin. So I'll add a new form. And there is some information here as well as one can click the video instruction to get information about how to add fields. There is a lot of information here, so this it might actually overshadow some of the box up here. Uh, but here on top, just kind of click this plus sign here, and it will open up a field pop-up. It will show the uh, gender unknown, and here is also the recent ones that have been used. There's also one for advanced, and different things we're going to hear. We're going to add reCAPTCHA, for instance, to the form. Section break, hidden field, current terms and conditions. It's kind of like a, a, a link, some information on link, I believe. Form step and there's various other options as well. So some of these belong to the pro version and some are then in a light. There is also a container where one can choose to add, for instance, two column, three column, four, five, six. And in this column, um, the, then one would add the field into the different columns when once you had these in. So for instance, if I wanted two column, it will do add like this. One would just kind of clicks inside to edit. I just want a basic form right now so I will just delete that and plus click the plus sign. I'll go to general and one can add name fields like so. This is actually just one name field that is split into three parts first name, middle name and last name. Um, I actually just want a regular simple text line as this field. So I will call this just name I can have a placeholder if I want. There can be a, a, a extra label here. There is information just kind of hovering over the eye uh, for information. Then we get some tooltip information. I want this as required. I will click the plus sign again. And this time I will add email. As you see here, there is a placeholder automatically added. And that is added in here. I will delete that. I will just leave it as email. I want this as required. Here, there's a global error message. I can add for this form and value email. I can, because I'll, as long as this is on, it's still um, part of the global message. I can put this in or not. I can deactivate it so it's, it becomes a custom error message instead of global message. I will just leave it as it is. Click. And here I will add simple text. This will the, be the subject line. I want this as required as well. And next up is then, um, let's see what it is, text area. This is the message. And I want this, I don't need a placeholder, I'm a row, I might want this longer than it is right now. If I put five, this is then extended to become from three to five rows. Columns has to do with, one right here has to do with CSS, uh, adding some CSS columns to this message box. I want this also as required. Submit form, I will change that to just call it send. And there's a button style. We can choose from different colors if you want to. 
and I'll just have it a default and here's button size small medium large and one cannot do it wider here with the options here that is something to do with you probably have to add say CSS then to have a wider button but I will just leave it as it is. Here we can also add a container class to for this button and that can then use CSS to make this button wider. Okay, so I have all the fields I want in place, name, email, subject, message, and a send button. I'll click the form, uh, save form, I will go to preview and design, and I just want to see what it looks like. And here it shows desktop view, I will show tablet view, as well as mobile view. So this is what it looks like for different views. And over here, there's it says advanced store, uh, form styler. This is just part of the pro version. I'm just going to skip this part. I will go back into editing fields. And editing fields, we get this whole left WordPress menu area back again. I will change the name of the form. I will just call it contact form and rename. So we see I renamed the form. I will click to go back here to all the form screen. If I click the back arrow, it will go back to the last page I was on, which is then uh, preview and design. So here I can go to settings integration, or I can click forms here and go back to the form screen. Hoover here, and I can go to settings this way. It, this is settings just for this form. There's also global settings for all forms. But I want to do I want to do some more with this specific form, so I'll go to settings. And there's a confirmation setting here. It will be it says type, choose a type of redirection after form submission. And this goes to the same page. I can go to another page that I want to here, or a custom URL. I will just put on the same page. Thank you for your message. We'll get back to uh, get in touch with you shortly. So we'll just kind of leave that in place. And what happens after sending a form? I'm going to hide the form or reset the form. I'll just keep it on hiding form. And there's a few other things down here as well. We can just kind of look through it. And uh, the next thing I need to do is go to email notification. This is really important or the email will not show up. And uh, there might be already uh, one added. This one here is disabled. If there's nothing here, just add a new notification and just kind of go through the steps. Here it says, okay, new add no notification, admin, notification, that's what I'm going to call it, and uh, send email to admin. Send email to admin notification. Enter email, I can choose to enter one or multiple emails, for instance, um, Paul Joachim easy web design tutorials dot com comma I can add as many emails as I want I can select a field and it says email here and this will go to the um, I believe the it says email but I think it I believe will go to admin email I'm not totally sure about that so here I will just kind of send this to my email for this website. Subject, uh, new submission from easywebdesigntutorials.com. So here I will need to, I can click over here and I can add some of these into the subject line if I want to. For instance, a new submission, new submission from um, name, but I will just kind of have it f new submission from ESO 10 tutorials. Here I can add short code, which is fairly similar to ones up here, the one here. I just want to add all data. Um, form uh, form sent from easywebdesigntutorials.com or there are other things I can add here as well basically kind of go through it and see what options that there are a site URL for instance down here in this line here and yeah so we'll just kind of add it as it is 
I can go to advanced I can add for instance from name so you can see who it's uh, sent from name from email email reply to and I will put an email here as well uh, I could probably um, here's some information here's the BCC and CC if I want this email uh, form email but to send to someone else I can also add a BCC or NCC so I will save this notification here's a setting up SMTP that is something I want to do later on because it will uh, more securely send an email so it doesn't fall through the system or fall through the cracks so to speak so here's the one that's disabled I can check out what that looks like here's that admin email name new from submission and this is how it they kinda added a default in there so I'll click the back I'll just keep that disabled I want to have this then enabled so the next thing I want to do I want to go to global settings because I want to secure the form because right now the form is not secure uh, it's not under security here and that is extra features like recaptcha uh, and different types for that I want to actually go to miscellaneous list here and I will enable honeypot security so this of course uh, could have been added under security but it's in under miscellaneous list turn that on I have a Kismet plugin already in use on this website if you have not installed it it's a good idea to do so and then and uh, fluent forms can also use a Kismet uh, to protect the form so we have basically a honeypot that will add a hidden form only bots will see and fill out and humans will not see this at all so if this uh, hidden field in a honeypot is filled out then the form will not go through. So this is then extra with a kismet also takes care of the form. So we have two things that will secure the form. So this is really helpful. So that is the things that I need to do here. Um, I think that's it. I would like to click the save settings even if there might not uh, be the need to do so. I'm not really sure. So here I will go back to the form I've set up the form, I've set up the notification for admin, I had then added uh, some security to the form by using Honeypot and also a Kismet. I will now add the form to the contact page. So we have the Fluent Form shortcode. There is also a, a Gutenberg uh, block included. But here I can just click it and I want to then open up my contact form page by going to contact and uh, here it is and I have already ninja form on this page and that is something I will then turn on later on so I will just go up here click enter uh, shift R to get a forward slash and then begin writing fluent and here it is or I can click the plus sign up here and write begin writing fluent fluent and here it is and I can also drag that out like so uh, here I need to select the form contact form and we see the contact form basically in here I will do a save so for the moment I actually have two contact forms on this page one for ninja form and one for fluent forms so this happened to be included so I can just delete that in a moment here's the fluent forms uh, con uh, form and here's ninja forms so I will go back here click the back button in the browser go to edit the page and just kind of remove this part so um, before I remove ninja forms or actually I can remove ninja forms from this page I will just delete it save and I will just view the page and now we have then the fluent form here so uh, I can just test it out and test and uh, let's see here I will just uh, this is this is a test so we'll send that out 
Thank you very much. We will get in touch with you shortly. I did not get the little punctuation here. So I will check my email here and then uh, let's see. We got, I'm using Vivaldi mail here. So it will be here it is, a new submission. And here it says the Joachim, the name I put in then, then name Joachim, and this form sent from easywebsigntutorials.com. Here it says Power Bly Fluent Form. So this works nicely. I think that's it for now. Thank you.